and my motorcycle would not trigger it. So I had to run that light many times. Hello everyone. Today I'm riding through the downtown area of the small town where I live because I want to demonstrate something pertaining to the traffic lights. So as many of you know who ride, traffic lights are not often fair to motorcycles. And it's the traffic lights that are triggered rather than the ones that are simply timed. The ones that are timed, it doesn't matter. They cycle through on a uh, on a timed cycle regardless of whether anybody's sitting in a particular spot or not but the ones that are triggered there are many types but the ones that tend to give us riders fits are the ones that use an inductive loop and i am going to go to one in my area that i know for a fact um, has not been triggered uh, with me twice and i'm going to see what happens today However, it's only effective if no one pulls up behind me or if nobody is already sitting there. So we will see what happens uh, when I get to this particular light. And of course, I've got traffic in front of me and behind me, so I doubt if I will get to demonstrate how the inductive loop is not picking me up today. I would probably have to come out here either early in the morning or at night when nobody else is around. Uh, but the two times I caught it, it was during the day. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time, I guess. Well, that's not going to work because there are already cars up here at the light. But this is the one in question. And you can see the inductive loop right there. Hopefully you can pick this up on the uh, on the camera. I'm trying to get a shot of it. But you can tell when you are at a light with an inductive loop because you can see the rectangle uh, that goes around the uh, stopping area. And even here you can see that they, uh, they extended the loop beyond the stop line because so many people do roll up ahead of it. And that way it'll still pick up their car. Now the problem with the inductive loop is the motorcycles just do not have enough mass to change the inductance uh, to raise it to indicate that there is something sitting over top of the loop and that's why we have the problem. So and maybe some motorcycles may be more sensitive or less sensitive than others uh, but nonetheless it's a problem for most of us I think if we get some of the, uh, the ones that just aren't that sensitive. Now my first experience with traffic lights and motorcycles was way back in the late 1980s when I was in Austin, Texas and I had to go through a light getting out of my neighborhood to get onto a busy highway, Highway 71, right near the Air Force Base and my motorcycle would not trigger it. So I had to run that light many times or if somebody pulled up behind me uh, I would usually give it a little time to see if somebody else was coming out of my neighborhood and see if they would trigger it because Highway 71 was very busy. It's even worse today. But nonetheless, um, it was a problem. So I ran it too many times to count. Now what I did was I called, and I forget exactly who it was, but I found the number and uh, with some running around and getting transferred and I ended up having a, a direct line where I could call this one individual and address the, my concern. And he took it seriously, so I give him credit for that. He did try to work with that light and he send, said to you, he would send folks out and adjust the sensitivity and ask me to get back with him to let him know how it went. And unfortunately, the whole time I was there, a couple of years, it just never did work. So I think the technology at the time was just not able to pick up such a small amount of mass sitting over the inductive coil. Uh, but like I said, I gave him credit for at least trying. Now here, I haven't called anybody yet, 
Uh, I, I'm just not down this way often enough to where it's that big of a deal. And as you can see a little bit ago, it's usually busy enough to where I'm not usually going to be the only one there. So it's not really an issue. Uh, if it were something I had to travel across every day and got stuck on it and was forced to run a red light every day, then yeah, I would address the issue. Uh, but in this particular case, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to address it. I have done some research on this topic and there are some states that have laws that allow motorcyclists and even uh, those on bicycles to run those right to run those lights if they do not change so and uh, they're called something like safe on red or dead red or something like that but there are several states that have passed laws to allow that to happen because at least they've uh, come to understand that the inductive coil is not picking up the, the, the smaller object sitting over top of it. But I have not seen where Alabama is one of those states. And I've also read where it's now supposed to be a law to where when they install those type of sensors, they have to use a newer technology that basically will pick up all obstacles uh, sitting over the top of it. So maybe that's why it's uh, rather rare that I, I've had that issue. And maybe that particular spot there, which is part of the old downtown area, so it probably has a, a system that was put in there probably decades ago. So again, it's not enough for me to worry about it this time. But I am curious as to uh, whether or not you guys are having issues with it uh, currently uh, where you're at. And if you've uh, tried to address it in any way, and if so, what type of response did you get from uh, the highway department or the county or whoever was in charge of the particular light in question? So let me know what your experience has been with these types of uh, lights. Got a little friend. He saw it was a VMAX and decided better. <laughs> anyway, so let me know what you think, what your experience has been with uh, inductive coil lights. And if you would, leave some comments. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. See you next time.